I think one of the greatest dangers when it comes to youth activism would be the tendency to strive towards um, extremism, um, be it for or against uh, human rights um, abuses. And, and therefore, the question is quite specific and quite hard to answer. Um, how, would, how important is philosophy, literature, history and cultural studies important into developing souls into ensuring that there is proper development and stabilization um, for the youth, um, which we would see as globally um, when we're more inclined to develop scientifically, um, artistic qualities as such get to ignore. And um, you, you talk about extremism, yes, I, I fear for, you know, for, for us as well, but I think in Malaysia, we're so moderate, it's fine. You know, you're not going to look at many people who are extremists. And I think it's, it's a plus point. It's a plus point for us, but I do agree with the suggestion, I think it was given by Anas Alam Faiz Lee. He wrote that all Malaysian universities must come with a philosophical department or philosophy department. And it's true. It is true, you know, you, you have to have a vibrant, independent um, a department that Ra'is Yatim cannot touch. You see? Because you have failed leaders or leaders who are archaic in their viewpoints and it affects the outcome of particular universities. You're talking about Saudi Arabia, they get someone from China and Singapore to become their vice chancellors because they want the best. We get Ra'is Yatim. Sanusi Junid, etc., etc. So it cannot be a place where politicians get rewarded, but we must start with choosing the best to lead our universities. And I agree with you there. I'm you know, suggesting and supporting the suggestion of having a philosophy department in every university. They are vibrant and it allows for creative thought. I mean, in Malaysia, what can you talk about? You can't talk about anything. <laughs> you go to bring to universities, you have to ask Halewa Plaja. And supposedly, they can partake in politics, but guess what? Politicians cannot enter universities. So there you have it. The future does not look very pleasant, but as long as we know the suggestion, you certainly have to push the agenda. People don't talk too much about these things, but I believe, you know, um, I was really affected when Habibi came here, uh, President Habibi. Do you know that he created the first aircraft the first Southeast Asian that basically came up you know, with this aeroplane, completely Indonesian made. And do we know about this? No, we don't. Many people don't know about this. And the only reason why they failed to, to sort of uh, produce an entire fleet was because of the 1997 Asian economic crisis. But he came and he was so clear cut in terms of his philosophy and outlook and his belief in the in a new Indonesian bangsa, a bangsa Indonesia. And he didn't say Malay, you know what I mean? And I felt so affected by the way he presented, you know, his viewpoints and how proud he was of bangsa Indonesia. So that is something that we can perhaps flesh out through philosophy, through understanding our history, through understanding the arts better and appreciating instead of forcing everyone to become engineers. I am an engineer proud of it, but I'm just saying that if everyone's engineers and accountants, it'll be very, very boring indeed. Thank you very much. Sorry, I have to take my leave. Yeah. I, I, I have to admit, I don't read philosophy and literature that much. I'm pretty much a practical guy. I read science fiction. I read um, fantasy books. I read thriller. Um, yet at the same time, um, I think it goes back to Mahade's fault as well. Um, it's pretty much a practice, you know, it's in, in our haste towards getting things done in the 80s and early 90s, we tend to reduce the importance of values and discourse about values. And, and it's always the choice between whether you want to sit down and talk about it for hours or whether you want to just go ahead and bulldoze and do it. Mahade obviously always feel prefer to just bulldoze uh, in the haste to get things done. Of course, if that's your attitude, along the way you will sacrifice um, what he consider as 
uh, doesn't fit into our journey towards a developed country. You know, he sees engineers, scientists, IT technicians as building block towards uh, a developed nation. And he dislikes lawyers and philosophers who just talk and question. Because obviously that's what philosophy is all about. It's about reflection and questioning and it's about coming to terms with all these dichotomies of values in our societies. And I think we suffered after 20 years for dumbing down talks and de-emphasizing um, discourse on philosophy. We suffer after 20 years because our society is torn apart with on one hand a wholly materialistic group who just ignore whatever happens around them so long as they get what they want in their life, financially, materially, and so on. On the other hand, um, you have a bunch of people who are disinterested about values so long again as... Um, because, because to them, values does not have a place in their heart because they're not used to values. So that's why I think while philosophy may frighten people, while literature is, is not the kind of things that sells, at least in our society yet, it is, hmm, it is very important towards a matured society. You need to have philosophy, you need to have literature and literary figures to reflect ourselves as a society. Not having literature and literary figures and high quality uh, literature materials means we are a society with a lot of goods but less souls in it because we can't see ourselves. And that's, I think, what's missing and that's definitely what needs to be done. Um, there's a lot of things that needs to be fixed with our uh, curricular and education system. The sooner we do it, the better.